Hello, this is going to be like a trial run reviewing a console. So if you like this review, I will probably review more consoles in the future. The Nintendo Revolution, first announced on E3 2009, later known as the Wii. I was kinda skeptical at first. I mean, these weird controllers, and why did they name it Wii? Why such a simple and short name? Would it so parents and grandparents could recognize the name? Wii. But then I got more interested. Well, the graphics looked like puke. I mean, it was nothing like the 360 which was already out. Okay, I'm just joking. So here it is, the Nintendo Wii, fastest selling video game console of all time. As you can see, it is really small. In fact, it's the smallest TV console I own. I think it's even smaller than the GameCube. While the Wii is taller and deeper, it's a lot thinner which makes it fit well in any backpack. It also comes with this awesome grey stand so you can keep it vertical. Now the big thing about the Wii is the Wii Remote, which is supposed to be a regular controller. You can navigate through menus by using the Wii Mode's pointer function. To make this work you have to put the sensor bar on top of your TV. The Wii Mode is filled with other cool functions like the motion sensing technology, rumble and speakers. But the speakers sound a bit low tech and can be annoying at times. I do kinda like the motion controls. They work well for party games like Wii Sports and WarioWare. But how are you gonna control adventure games and platformers like Super Mario Galaxy with just the Wii mode? Well that's why Nintendo made the accessory called the Nunchuck. This thing has a joystick which is just as comfortable as the GameCube joystick. Two buttons and just like the Wii mode, it has motion technology. But it doesn't have rumble so you'll only feel rumble in one hand. I'm not really a big fan of this thing since I find it way overused in many games. I mean, let's face it, there are so many portals to the Wii like Transformers and Lego Star Wars and these games, especially Lego Star Wars, are made for use of the regular controller and when they are being ported over to the Wii, they force you to play with the Wii mode and nunchuck. They are constantly coming out portals to the Wii, many made by third party companies and many by Nintendo themselves. I mean, this just doesn't work, you can't just take a random game, add some motion controls to it and call it a Wii game. You need to start by making motion controls, then make a good engine around the motion controls, and then make a whole game around the engine and controls. The game needs to be made for the Wii from scratch. If there's one thing I think Nintendo should have learned after all these years of the Wii, it's gotta be no more port overs to the Wii. But it doesn't seem like they have learned. Now they have made this stupid series of new play control, which unbelievably is just... <laughs> A whole bunch of GameCube games being ported <laughs> over to the Wii. Seriously? I'm completely against this. These games were made for the GameCube, not Wii. Maybe Pikmin was a good idea since on the GameCube it had some Wii controls, but they might as well just make a Pikmin free. Now there are games on the Wii like Super Smash Bros. Brawl that don't need any motion controls, and thank god they allow you to use alternate controllers. The first and probably best solution is using your dusty old awesome GameCube controller. You see, the Wii has 4 GameCube controller inputs and 2 memory slots which means you can play GameCube games on the Wii which is really cool, but I still prefer playing GameCube games on my GameCube. The second alternate control solution is the classic controller. This thing is being connected directly into the Wii mode, but it isn't as comfortable as the GameCube controller, it has no rumble and for whatever stupid reason it's not compatible with GameCube games. And it's not even bundled with the Wii, you have to buy it separately which really sucks. Moving on with the system itself. On the front it has an SD card input so you can store data. Unbelievably Nintendo are actually selling Wii SD cards which are just regular SD cards with less memory and they are more expensive. And it says Wii on them. What's the point? You might as well just buy a regular SD card. And by the way, you can't play DVDs on the Wii, which I thought was standard for all today's devices. And for those of you who are wondering what to do with these two pieces of plastic objects, you're supposed to stick this one on top of your TV, so you can put your sensor bar more firmly on it. And this thing, I wasn't sure at first, did it have something to do with the classic controller? Well, actually, you're supposed to put it underneath this grey stamp, so your Wii won't fall over that easily. Speaking of piece of plastic, there are constantly coming out accessories for your Wii mode, like the Wii Sapper, which I pretty much passed, so I got the Nike Perfect Shot instead, which I heard is better, but it's not really as cool as it looks. And I also got these controller grips and steering wheel. Okay, now it's time to take a look inside the Wii.
What? No intro? We just get a cheap ass warning screen. Come on, the DS also had a warning screen, but it had an intro too. And that was so great about the DS having two screens. We got an intro on the top screen and a warning on the bottom. Okay, here's the Wii menu, which can be navigated with a pointer, so that's cool. You have a good overlook over all your software or channels as they call it here. Let's go through some of the most interesting ones. The Mii channel allows you to customize your own Mii and use them in several games. I find them a bit underused since it seems like only official Nintendo games use these. Third party games have to deal with using their own Mii clones. The photo channel makes you able to look at pictures and have fun with them. And that's pretty much it. Internet channel. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> YouTube XL. Hmm. Okay, honestly, I don't think this channel is worth the money. I mean, I don't see the point when you can just use a computer. Nintendo channel. Sorry, I found nothing interesting on this channel. It was just a whole bunch of slow loading advertisements and trailers, which are already on YouTube. The only cool thing here are the downloadable DS demos, and they were awesome. Okay, I'll skip the news and forecast channel, since you'll never get used to those channels. And I'll go straight to the Mii Contest channel, which I found pretty cool. Since you can upload Mii's, vote for Mii's, and then see the result. Pretty fun stuff. And then, of course, we got everyone's favorite Wii Shop channel. Uh, okay, what's taking so long? Ah, there we go. Here you can download classic games from NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and some other system like Sega Mega Drive, which used to be Nintendo's biggest enemy back in the days. I have to say that the NES games are really expensive. Maybe they're cheaper in the USA, but here in Europe they are just too expensive. Well, I still find it kinda cool being able to download classic games, but I feel a bit bad for downloading games like Super Mario 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time, and Super Mario Bros. when I already have the original cartridges. What was I thinking? The games you download give you alternate control types. NES games are best with the Wiimote sideways. Super Nintendo games are best with the classic controller. And Nintendo 64 games are best with the GameCube controller. Now about the Super Nintendo games. I've always found it weird that in many games like Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country, you have to press B to jump and Y to run or attack or throw or pick up or whatever. I mean, why don't you just use A to jump and B to run, attack, you know? It has never really made sense to me. But when you play Super Nintendo games on the GameCube controller, you have to play like this. Yes, you ask for it, you got it. B to jump and Y to run. What the crap? Ugh. You know what? I'm done with this. Let's just take a look at some of the party games you can find on the Wii, and let's review the motion controls. First we have Wii Sports, which is bundled with the Wii. It has only 5 games, which means I'm going to go deep into each one. But keep in mind, I'm only reviewing the motion controls. First there is Tennis, and the controls are horrible. You can't move your character, he moves automatically, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The only thing you can do is choosing either backhand or forehand, and that's it. There is no strategy to it. Okay, that was a bad first impression. Hopefully baseball is better. The controls here are actually really good. You have to try hitting at perfect timing in a specific angle. Bowling. Well, it's cool seeing the pins fall over, but like all bowling games, the gameplay is not that fun. Why do they keep trying to turn bowling into a game? Golf. The game itself is really fun, but there isn't so much motion controls to it. You just do a swing motion, and I wouldn't expect anything more than that. But sometimes it's real hard to do a weak hit. And then last but not least, boxing. This one uses both Wiimote and Nunchuck, and you box. You can punch, you can move, you side, dodge, block, and cool stuff. It's a bit hard to execute stronger attacks, but other than that, it works well. Now it's time to take a look at WarioWare Smooth Moves. This game has around 200 microgames, 
So if it has that many, you might think the motion controls might be terrible, but they actually work surprisingly well. But one problem is that there are too many control types. Like, what's the difference between the remote control, the sketch artist, the bug of war, the elephant, and the waiter? They all require to hold the remote towards the screen, but just hold it in a slightly different way. What a waste! But other than that, Wireware Smooth Move is pretty cool. Okay, are there any more party games I can try out? Um, how about um, this? Mario Party 8. Nah, but there is one more party game that I really want to go deep into. <laughs>